Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for September 30th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to a the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. It typically happens Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 Pacific, except when it coincides with a US holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, ask us to add you to the at CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a shared notes document that accompanies the meeting or recording. You can contribute to this doc beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the meeting that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes to the following meeting. If you wish to to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in that doc for us to read. This meeting is held in five parts. Uh, community news, the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka, hug reports, status updates, and in the weeds. Uh, I'll talk briefly about each of those as we get them. Um, I'm trying to catch a ferry after the meeting, so I'm going to skip a little bit more details there. But uh, I'll take a timestamp and get to community news. So community news is a, a preview or a, a piece of the uh, Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. And my keyboard's unhappy with me. Um, why can't I type a one? Oh, I can't type numbers, but I can type letters just fine. All right, well, I guess I'll skip time codes. <laughs> OK, so community news. Um, we have the Adafruit grand opening in Industry City, uh, Brooklyn, New York. On September 20th, Adafruit had a grand opening in their new Brooklyn, New York factory at Industry City. Uh, special thanks to the president of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce, and the managing director of Industry City, and the vice president of partnerships at the New York City EDC. Um, a quick reminder, uh, though, that just because you know where Adafruit is doesn't mean they have a store or tours, uh, so don't try to visit. Um, they're just making cool products in their factory that you order online. All right, next up, we'll see if I can take... I still can't take... Uh, let right, me... what, what time do you have? And I'll do the time code I, while you're... I can, I can reset my keyboard here okay. as well. Um, Weird. I don't know. I, maybe it thinks that something's pressed down. Um, it's 3.30 right now. OK. All right. I'll pay attention to that. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not the end of the world. I can always add them later, too. Okay. Um, thank you, though, Dan. OK, second up, we have MicroPython Memory Profiler. Uh, Planet Innovation, uh, planetinnovation.com, has released the MicroPython Memory Profiler under an open MIT license. It's an in-house tool originally written mostly by Damian George, uh, MicroPython's creator, for a project where fragmented memory was an issue when running a device for many hours and days. And last up um, in community news, we have Adafruit, well, second to last, Adafruit on the Open Source Hardware Association's show and tell event, which is October 2nd at 6.40 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Eastern Time. It says, Adafruit will be part of the Open Hardware Association's show and tell on Wednesday, October 2nd at 6.40 p.m. Eastern Time, right before the Adafruit Weekly Show and Tell and Ask an Engineer. It's a triple header of open source. You'll be able to watch and participate live, and there's a blog post there as well. And those notes are, or links are in the notes doc. Join the Adafruit team live as they, hmm? as they discuss <laughs> latest projects, share how open source has shaped their cause and business, and showcase some of the incredible things that have been open source hardware certified. You'll get a behind the scenes look at the new Adafruit factory in Industry City, Brooklyn, New York. 
and the tools in use. This will be part of the Oshawa Open Hardware Month, a 24-hour live stream where you can check in with open source creators and groups around the world to celebrate all things open. Lee and Sid will be there from Oshawa to host and answer any viewer Oshawa-related questions. Did you tell me your time code again? Five, that... 5.20 for the newsletter Thank details. You. Great, okay. Uh, um, the Python and Microcontrollers weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python-related, hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub. Um, you may also email cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X. Next up at 602 is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Uh, this is a statistical kind of objective view of the project uh, before we get into the more subjective perspective on things. So uh, some numbers. At 620, uh, overall, 15 pull requests merged, 12 different authors. Uh, thank you to um, Sanhu88, Sean Klein, Eric321, uh, and Sam Blenny, Blenny are all infrequent contributors, so thanks to them. Uh, thanks to Foamy Guy for reviewing as well. Uh, we had seven issues closed by four people and 16 opened by 15 people, so we're net up nine. And uh, we haven't assigned any Hacktoberfest labels yet, and I don't know what the state of Hacktoberfest is, but that's usually in October. Okay, for the core at 6.55 or so, uh, we had nine pull requests merged. Thank you, Dan, for doing time codes. That's what the, the, the numbers are. Um, we had 10 different authors, uh, those folks I just mentioned. Uh, for, did I say nine pull requests merged? We have 22 open pull requests, so we're comfortably under our one-page 25 pull request goal. Um, we had three closed issues by two people and seven open by seven people, so we're now up four, uh, just for the core of CircuitPython, for a total of 743 open issues. We track our issues using the milestone system on GitHub. Um, this is to prioritize work by Adafruit-funded folks. Um, so we have... Uh, nine open issues on 920 and one open on 91x those are the the top priority ones for us we also have one issue not assigned a milestone that will be uh shows that we're like keeping abreast on um triaging everything so now let's go over to foamy guy for the library update at eight thanks scott even uh this sec this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, all of which can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it happens to be. Uh, across all those libraries this week, we had five pull requests merged by three different authors. Um, we had three different reviewers as well, thanks to Dan, Jeff, uh, Scott, and myself this week for working the libraries, although uh, I will say I didn't do too much in library land this week. Um, of the four pull requests, uh, or the five, excuse me, pull requests that were merged this week. The oldest one was four days old. The newest ones were just one day. Uh, that leaves us at the end of the week with 41 open pull requests. The oldest one is a draft at 774 days. The newest one is down at one day. They, uh, in terms of issues, we had four issues closed by three people with seven new issues opened up by seven people. Um, we have zero issues uh, assigned the Hacktoberfest label. Um, although I, I think we use labels on the repo at this point. So uh, as far as I understand it, all PRs and issues that get closed or, or handled, I should say, during October uh, should count for Hacktoberfest. Um, we can check into that be, to be sure, but that's my understanding. I believe that's how it was the last couple of years. Yep, I think you're right. Um, that leaves us at the end of the week with 891 open issues. Uh, there are 102 of those that are marked good first issues, which you would be able to find uh, over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is a website where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython. On that page, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Uh, the first place we usually point folks who want to get involved is that list of open PRs. Find something in the list on that page at circuitpython.org slash contributing. 
uh, look through the list, find something that's either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for, or you've got an understanding about what it's, uh, what it's for. Um, click through to GitHub, take a look at the code that's in that PR. Uh, if you do have the hardware, go ahead and try it out. Um, look over the code for uh, syntax, uh, spelling, logic, uh, anything that um, you can. Um, and just leave a comment there on GitHub, letting us know that you looked it over, what you found. Uh, if you were able to run it on hardware, let us know how that went. And if you uh, do that a couple of times, get comfortable with the process, and you want to get leveled up to leave official reviews over on GitHub, we can get you leveled up to do that. Uh, the other major thing you can find on that contributing page is the list of open issues. And again, if you are interested in getting involved more on the, the coding rather than the reviewing side of things, you can look through that list of issues, find something, again, that's interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for, click through to GitHub, figure out what the issue is talking about, whether it's a bug fix or a new feature or what have you. Uh, go ahead and uh, implement the fix or the new feature and submit your own PR with it. Uh, we do have a guide for contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. Uh, so if you need help with that, we can point you towards a guide. And we also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are more than happy to help you uh, get started. So if you do want to contribute uh, either reviews or contribute code, uh, but you're having some trouble with Git or GitHub, uh, please come join us on the Discord. Say hi, let us know what you're up to, and uh, some folks will be more than happy to help. Uh, in terms of the library PyPI weekly download stats this week, we had uh, just under 400,000. So we're at 399,896 uh, PyPI downloads for the 333 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes doc and the updated libraries uh, this week are the Piper Blockly uh, one over in the community bundle and register uh, in the Adafruit bundle. That's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Tim. And thanks to Dan for covering for time codes. I think restarting my browser made, well, I think that Google Docs is trying to do fancy markdown things or emoji things or something to screw me up. So uh, for Blinka, uh, this is the CircuitPython API compatibility layer that lives on top of single board computers and CPython or MicroPython. Um, in Blinka land, we had one pull request merge from myself and uh, reviewed from Foamy Guy. Thank you, Foamy Guy. There are eight open pull requests, um, two open issues by two people, um, zero closed, uh, for a total of 109 open issues. The PyPI uh, downloads for the last week for Blinka were 29,530, and PyWheels downloads in the last month were 18,993. Uh, there are a total of 146 supported boards that are primarily single board computers. Okay, next up we have hug reports. This is a chance for us to say thank you to the folks in our community for doing awesome things. It also highlights uh, things that we value as a community. So uh, <laughs> I just realized that I put myself at the bottom, uh, but I will go first as the host usually does. And then I'll circle back to the top. Um, the hug report that I have this week is for Brandon Hurst, who works at uh, Analog Devices, and they uh, made a pull request to CircuitPython to add the support for the Max 32690, which is an Analog Devices microcontroller. And I think it has a, a meg of SRAM, which is quite awesome. So thanks to Brandon for uh, learning how to build CircuitPython and bringing it to a new platform. All right, with that, let's go to Dan. That's better, okay. Uh, thanks to Scott uh, for doing most of the work uh, about updating to the new ESP IDF I2C driver. I use that as the basis for a PR, which I'll talk about later. Um, thanks to Jeff who reviewed my PR after I submitted it and found some useful uh, and important uh, fixes. Uh, thanks to Sam Blenny who's working on core contributions of various kinds, really helpful, thank you. And thanks to Retired Wizard, who's working on various kinds of code cleanups in the core, which is also really helpful. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up, let's go to Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Scott. Um, hug reports for me. Uh, first one to Yaw No uh, for sharing some good resources uh, over the weekend uh, for finding points along the line uh, while I was working on some related stuff during my stream. Uh, and then secondly, thanks to Dan for cleaning up some leftover server files in the ESP32 spy library and pointing a uh, user who opened an issue along to the thing that they were looking for, which was actually moot. Uh, and that's what I got. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. Uh, next up is Jepler.
Hello there. Having a little trouble with my buttons today. I oh, wanted I to give that. a hug to Dan <laughs> for uh, working on the Espressive uh, I squared C update and all the stuff that that touches, including the camera. I think we'll hear a little bit more about Dan from that in a few moments. And finally, a group hug. All right. Thank you, Jeff Blair. And last up, we have notes from Sam Bunny that I will read off. Sam says, a hug to Tanu, myself, and Dan for help with PRs for USB stuff. And that's it for hug reports. Uh, just a reminder, if you do want to participate via hug reports, you can add them to the notes doc, and I'm happy to read those off. Similarly, uh, let's move on to status updates. This is a chance to talk about what you've been working on in the past week and what you plan on working on in the coming week. Um, I will start, and then we'll go down the list. And I realized uh, just now that I should probably just reiterate that I am expecting a kid <laughs> in the next four weeks. Uh, so if I disappear, uh, that's what's happening. I'm going to take about four weeks off when they're little and then come back to work until my wife goes back to work. So that's, that's happening. Don't be surprised if I say that I'm out. Uh, that's what's going on. And if you hear like planning about who runs meetings and stuff, that's what's happening. Um, until then, I'm continuing working on Circuit Matter, which is a pure Python implementation of the Matter IoT spec. I cur currently, I'm working on establishing a certificate-based sec secure channel as opposed to the passcode one that I did originally. This is hopefully later in the, the commissioning process of a new device. Um, and this uh, secure channel establishment is the same process as rejoining after a reset. So this is the one that actually we're going to use more often. Uh, passcode is only used at the very start. Um, attestation and node operational credentials are being received, and, and we're claiming that we're doing the right things with them, although there might be some work there. Um, one odds and ends thing I did is I added um, pin definitions to board for IO4 and IO7 to the Feather RP2350 board just to match the silk screen. Um, somebody on the forums pointed that out, and so I, I added those there so that it would be more obvious. Uh, next up, let's go to Dan. All right, so uh, mainly for the past uh, week or so, I've been working on um, updating CircuitPython to use Espressif's new I2C driver in um, the ESP IDF um, SDK, which is what we the lower level software that we use to implement CircuitPython. Um, underneath the covers, or to do all the sort of systemy stuff, and uh, we were actually blocked on updating to this new driver because um, the ESP32 camera library, which we use for Memento and other cameras, um, hadn't been updated to this new driver. Somebody did a bit of PR to that. It turns out it actually wasn't that complicated, and we probably could have updated the driver ourselves, but it, it showed up. So um, Scott had already done a lot of work to update to this new driver and was kind of holding it in abeyance until we were able to update. So I started with that um, branch of his and then uh, got it running and tested it with multiple I2C devices and it worked fine for everything except that the camera library didn't work. And I also had to update the camera library myself in certain ways to adapt it to the way we manage uh, things internally. It was assuming one way and we were doing something else. So uh, in debugging this, the camera didn't work and I was, it was kind of, I couldn't figure out whether it was something that, and a bug that I in, introduced in adapting the library or something wrong with I2C, it was really not clear. But after three days of debugging, I figured out that there was actually a bug in the new camera driver library, there was some code that uh, set you 16-bit addresses that um, had never actually been tested. It, the updated library was only tested on 8-bit uh, address cameras. And so um, after I found out they were swapping the bytes twice by accident, I fixed that. I submitted a PR upstream, which has already been accepted, and uh, soon we should be able to get this new I2C driver into uh, CircuitPython. And it seems to fix several uh, long-standing problems with uh, I2C on ESP32 S2 or S3. And Great. after this, we have about maybe nine or 10 more issues, eight or 10 more issues to work, go on for CircuitPython 9.2.0. And I'm sure more will show up, but that's kind of the order of magnitude of what we have to work on. Okay. Thank you, Dan, for the update. 
Next up, let's go to Foamy Guy for an update. All right, thank you. Um, I have been uh, kind of continuation on what I was working on last week with the build tool. Uh, this time, though, in uh, the Adabot, Adabot has a cron um, GitHub actions that run once runs once a day to release the new uh, bundles. And so I've been trying to make it so that it will not try to release those bundles and it will not push to anything if the bundles fail to build. Um, and I have got that working, I think, although it's it's difficult to test it in the real environment, but I was able to kind of try to mock it up as best as I could, and I was able to get a successful condition that uh, doesn't run the next job when it fails. Um, the next thing that came out of that, though, is that PR for Adabot with that change is actually failing uh, the actions for a different reason. Something in the tests is failing. Um, as far as I can tell, it seems unrelated. Uh, but I am digging into that a bit more. There's some unrecognized uh, arguments being passed into a few things, and there's some headers that were being expected that are not there for some reason. So I'm trying to add some more uh, print outputs and figure out what's going on there. Um, the other thing that I have been up to is uh, something I started over the weekend, which is a display IO based uh, spirit board project, or perhaps uh, more well known under the trademark name uh, Ouija board. Um, but on mine, uh, instead of spirits, the messages will actually just come from Adafruit IO. So you can set the message ahead of time and then kind of set it up and play with your friends and family and it will say um, whatever message you put into it. Um, the current version is running on the Pi Portal Titano and is working pretty good, but I intend to make a scaled down version that will run on the standard Pi Portal and then perhaps uh, another version that can use some feathers with the TFT feather wings that are the same sizes <clears throat> as those Pi Portals. And then uh, in the midst of doing that, I implemented a couple helpers for Display.io um, to use in this project, an anchored tile grid, which is a tile grid subclass that gives you access to anchor point and anchor position, uh, like the similar ones that are on display text, which means you can move your tile grid around based on a different sort of relative point. Uh, and I also made a slide function that helps you move a tile grid from one location to another uh, over time uh, along, a, along a specific line, uh, which is being used for the planchette inside of the spirit board. And that's what I've been up to. Thanks. Thank you, Foamy Guy. Next up is Jepler. Hi there. Um, so I completed my uh, work through of a long checklist of things to make sure are working on the RP2350. So I put together a bunch of very, very simple, but uh, useful projects to exercise like the PIO peripheral, each kind of display and so forth. That's been going on over the last couple weeks. I finished that up and there's kind of one or two things um, that I still need to like work a pull request through to get it merged, but things are in good shape with this new microcontroller. We didn't find anything that was new and as terrible as the E9 Aratum. So everything is mostly fine. Um, there are just a couple of issues and they look like just software bugs. Um, so next up, I'm going to swap these two because I actually got a little geek trapped on what was supposed to be on deck, which mm -hmm. is Adafruit has this project that is called the um, Arduino Audio FX Soundboard. And we want to kind of redo that within CircuitPython and take advantage of the fact that on the RP2350, we have enough processing power to do uh, more than one MP3 playback at the same time. So the idea would be with this base CircuitPython program, you can set up your, your audio file names just like you did with the audio FX soundboard. And it almost becomes a no code thing where you press a button and you get a sound and you've got some, some triggers and various things that you can do. So that's what I've been working on. The other thing that I'm working on is uh, creating the PS2 IO module for the Raspberry Pi microcontroller families. Um, as I mentioned in a previous meeting, I've got some working code in pure Python and just need to translate that over into the core with uh, scare quotes around the just. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm up to. And the other thing, uh, I'll probably show this off on Show and Tell on Wednesday, but I've done a little countdown project for myself. And that was to try e-ink and deep sleep on an ESP32-S3 Feather, because I just hadn't done that lately. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. And thank you. Thanks, Jepler. I think there's a bug around deep sleep that maybe you're you're adjacent to if you want to look at it. Uh-oh. No, no, I don't want to fix any bugs. I just <laughs> I want think, to have a little countdown timer. <laughs> I think it's, uh, well, this is why I don't do CircuitPython as a hobby, but uh, I think it's just like we're we're thinking that BLE is attached when it's not, so we're not deep sleeping or something. I don't know. It's I think it's marked as 920. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I can't really tell if it's deep sleeping, and I haven't you know hooked up current probes to it, right. but uh, right. I'll see how long the battery lasts. Sounds good. 
Uh, right. uh, yeah, I know. I definitely know the like don't get distracted thing. Uh, next up, we have Mark. I'm actually here today, so Yay, I will welcome. speak. Um, I don't have the notes up though because I wasn't thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. But just working on the audio effects, they're almost ready to get out of the draft PR. Um, I've got an example going with both 16-bit and 8-bit unsigned audio. I didn't come across anything that was 16-bit unsigned or 8-bit signed. So I th I'm not going to spend too much time on uh, types that might be more exotic. Mm -hmm. I do want to test MP3s, but it's worked with WAV files, it's worked with raw samples, it's worked with synth. So I think I'm close. Awesome. Thanks for working on that, Mark. Yeah, it's been fun. No mm -hmm. problem. All right. Uh, last but not least, we have notes from Sam Blenny, who says, um, I'm working on improving exception handling for quirky, or quirky USB devices. And that's it for Hug Report or status updates. Uh, we have an in the weeds section, which is any kind of sort of longer form things, but currently we don't have anything today. So we're going to skip straight to wrap up. And I will set a time code and pull up my wrap up notes. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for September 30th, 2024. Thank you to everybody who made it this week. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit. I'm going to do that tomorrow. And the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in next week's Python on for Microcontrollers newsletter, uh, which you can subscribe to by visiting adafruitdaily.com. Uh, the next meeting is the normal time I looked. Uh, October 7th, next Monday at the usual 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. It is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. With that, uh, thank you everybody who made it. It's awesome to hear from you all. Hope to see you next week. Thank you, everyone.